My friends, this is a video that's actually pretty personally important to me, and that is my streaming setup. This is something that I needed to optimize in a way that's most effective for me because my team is gone, and so I needed to slim down the space, which is why I present to you the smallest streaming PC out there. This is coming in at just under five liters, which makes it smaller than a PS4. Not a PS4 Pro, a regular PS4, and thereby smaller than a PS5, obviously, but it packs eight cores, 16 threads, and has three inputs for capturing devices. I love it so much. We're gonna talk about it a little bit more after we talk about today's video sponsor. My friends, today's video is brought to you by Brilliant. Brilliant allows you to engage and understand concepts in the realms of math, science, computer science, general logic in a way that is masterfully story told, but also in a way that keeps you coming back for more in a very addictive, interactive, experience. As I mentioned, they have wide ranging topics such as mathematic fundamentals to quantitative finance to introduction to neural networks to cryptocurrency. Those last two kind of key on my mind, especially as we're moving into the AI age, machine learning, something that everybody should really have a fundamental concept of, as well as cryptocurrency for obvious reasons. So Brilliant makes this fun by allowing you to understand the concepts and then apply them. They believe that effective learning is active. So they make it so that you're solving fun, interactive problems by yourself. So whether it is learning about neural networks or data structures or programming with Python, you're going to want to continue to use Brilliant on a daily basis simply because it makes it fun for you to learn. So you click the link in the video description to sign up for Brilliant for free. And the first 200 of you who click that link can get 20% off of the annual premium subscription. Again, check the link out, check Brilliant. It's a free membership to try. Just go ahead and see if any of these courses, especially in the scientific region or computer science region with respect regards to neural nets could suit you. So this was previously my streaming PC. This is an i9-10980XE on an MSI X299 motherboard with an RX 5500 XT. And I needed to slim it down. That's just a normal mid tower PC, but with me only having 60 square feet of room in my office, I needed to make it more compact, which is where this comes in. This is the Skyreach 4 mini case. And the links for everything will be in the video description of everything that we use. But suffice it to say, this suits all of my needs for streaming, for content creation. Everything that I could possibly want to do is now kept just under two monitors right here. This case is lovely. It can fit a mini ITX motherboard and it can also fit an actual graphics card. However, I didn't choose to use a graphics card because I don't need one for the streaming that I do. But that also doesn't mean that there's not options for people who might want to use graphics cards in the future. So. Let me go over the base level of this PC. We have a Ryzen 7 4750G as the base. That's eight cores and 16 threads Zen 2 architecture with an integrated GPU on it, which is actually really good. It'll play games really decently. And for those of you who didn't catch it, you can check out a review on the 4750G on our second channel right over there. But suffice it to say, the eight cores and 16 threads is more than enough for streaming. We're not getting NVENC acceleration from an NVIDIA graphics card, but we make up for it with the raw horsepower of eight Zen 2 cores. Then we have 64 gigs of Corsair LPX RAM at 3600 megahertz because I do all of my video editing on this PC. And then as I mentioned, it does have the integrated graphics. So for the PCI Express slot, I decided to slap in one of Aver Media's live streamer duos. This allows me to have two inputs for whatever streams that I'm doing, as well as one input USB on the cam link where I can get three inputs on this mini PC right here, effectively replacing my 10980XE. Now sure, eight cores isn't the same as 18, but it gets within a ballpark region of where I was comfortable to give up the extra 10 cores in order to slim down the size. I, I would say that this is probably somewhere in the region of 30% of the original size. So cutting it down makes a lot of sense. So in the live stream where I actually built this PC, you can see that I utilize multiple camera angles for whatever PC build that I do. And the two inputs on the Live Gamer Duo will allow me to get the B and C cam, and then I use the cam link for my A cam or whatever's facing me. However, if you wanted to build this yourself, the Live Gamer Duo would allow you to, number one, have a secondary PC that you could use for whatever gaming, but also you could use it for your PlayStation or your Xbox or whatever input that you would 
would want. Multicam in such a small form factor is something that I've been desiring, and I'm so glad that Aver Media came out with the Live Gamer Duo. And it's all fitting in this ITX enclosure. The Skyreach 4 Mini is an interesting case because it doesn't fit a normal power supply, which is how we get it sized down so much. And honestly, because I'm only using a capture card, I could have shrunk it down a little bit more, but there's not that many high quality mini ITX cases that only do one single PCI Express slot. It's usually two because they assume you're putting a graphics card in there. So we had room to slim down, but then it like then we get my Inwin B1, which has no PCI Express options whatsoever. But we got to utilize for my first time ever a Pico PSU, which essentially connects to a laptop charger. And then I just kind of duct taped it to the front of the case right here. The, the power supply is actually right in this section. So that's it. That's that's the PC. This is the smallest streaming PC that I can think of. And to play video games, obviously, you would more than likely want a beefier system. But thankfully, there's options for that even without putting in a graphics card. You can get GeForce Now that allows you to play on an RTX graphics card anywhere in the world. You can play on Google Stadia, for that matter, if you own the game on their platform. You can also use Project X Cloud, or as I mentioned, with having dual inputs on the Aver Media, it would allow you to use whatever other gaming object that you would want in the entire world that has an HDMI out into the HDMI in. But then just to round off my streaming setup, because I did try to make the space as effective as possible, we have the mini ITX PC, which NFC system sells wraps for it, which I have this gorgeous like green and orange tie-dye wavy thing that's going on. I Quinix reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to check out their F96 keyboards, and they just so happened to make them in a color that matches what I'm going on with with this PC and these are beautiful. 96% is where it's at for a production level mechanical keyboard. This one particularly can be both wired and wireless. These, I believe, have the Cherry MX pinks and I love it because the 96% means that I still get a full keyboard. I don't miss out on the 10 key. I can still have the numpad, which is great for all of the actual work that I do on this PC, but I can have it in as small of a form factor as possible and looking so sleek and matching everything else. On top of that, my mouse is the G903 from Logitech. Rode sent over their Rodecaster Pro, which allows me to have four XLR inputs, as well as a phone input and a Bluetooth input, as well as my computer input. So I can control everything from here. And obviously, this takes up a bulk of the space, but it does allow me to do things like have my wife on a live stream with a secondary mic, alter her own, or record podcast, or have any number of setups. If I wanted to put a microphone on the opposite side, out of the room, but didn't want to switch mics, I can just have it on the Rodecaster because that would allow me to just put it on my third or fourth input and I'd be totally good to go there. And then obviously the staple of any streamer, the Stream Deck right here. I went with the XL because I found that the regular one, I just, I go into too many folders and it's just easier if I have more buttons than fewer. And then the monitors, both 1440p, both 165 hertz, both 27 inch, and then I vase mounted them on a boom pole because that allows me to have them up. So I I can slide the PC under it and then I'm good to go as far as just having everything established right here. And then as I've mentioned previously in another video, I just take my camera, I put it right up there and this is how either I do my A-roll for streaming or this is how we film our YouTube videos for everything that we do on YouTube. So this is my effective streaming setup. I have three capture inputs on this PC, eight cores, 64 gigs of RAM, a pretty decent iGPU, a full mechanical keyboard in as small a space as possible so that I can reserve this entire section right over here for whatever PC build that I want to do. I told myself I was gonna get rid of that Windex before I started this video, but I completely forgot. But now I have this open space where I can take my secondary camera and just go ahead and throw it right up there. And now I'm good for whatever top-down shots I wanna do for whatever streams. Or I can take my other cameras, put them on a tripod, and then have them give another angle for whatever PC build that I'm doing like this and now you have a really good angle of whatever I'm working on, like the Pulse 3D headset from 
PlayStation. It's all set up now so that I can have it streamed. I just come over to the stream deck, I press the button, I switch the scenes, and we are good to go. Now, as a last little couple of things that I've done to optimize my stream setup, I actually have a 25 foot HDMI cable that goes from this PC right here, wraps around the wall to that back area right over there. So if I wanna capture any footage on my PlayStation 5, my Series X, or the PC that's kind of hidden under there, I can do so by just plugging in that extra large HDMI cable into one of the capture inputs. So optimizing space has been the goal for everything that I'm doing. I have lost 10 cores, but I have gained so much more in functionality and I'm super, super th happy about how I have this set up. But I can't forget to talk about my autonomous L-shaped desk. This thing allows me to do so much more. It's again, optimizing the space in which I operate as effectively as possible. As you can see, it's L-shaped, which means that I can have a separate station over here and then my workstation over here, and they can be completely segregated and pushed aside from one another. But then I can also create different environments. Being on my feet during filming or streaming is great because I can capture the energy that I'm trying to project. But then if I actually wanna sit down, it's as easy as pressing that button and then down it goes and I can sit down down and edit and actually work at my station in, in a matter of seconds. This autonomous desk has saved me so much work from having to figure out how am I going to have a standing set as well as a sitting set and how do I manage between the two. Sit-stand desks are the way of the future and L-shaped sit-stand desks, holy crap, are absolutely the top of the game here. This specific one allows me to have four different inputs. So one and four are set for me where I've programmed them. Number one is where I sit down. It's the perfect height. It doesn't clip any of the other things that I have going on. Number four is for my streaming and filming. So this gives me the perfect height for actually filming dead straight on or if I'm streaming. Number two is actually my standing workstation. So this is a comfortable position for my wrists and for my elbows and allows me to actually feel like I'm I'm not going to get carpal tunnel syndrome and it's great. What do I, what do I have three set to? I don't know what three is. I, I set three, but here it is. Oh, right. It's when I was using a different camera and I had to like look over the camera to change the settings. I set it to three so that while I'm filming, I could come over and look at the back of the camera and do whatever I need to there. So having this autonomous desk, honestly has given me a lot more flexibility, which is exactly what I'm going for here. If you've missed the previous video where I went over the general setup of my room and how I'm maximizing space there, you can check it out right up here. But this video was more or less about my actual streaming PC, how I consolidated from 18 cores and a dedicated graphics card to eight cores and still keeping the same amount of streaming inputs and roughly the same amount of usability, but condensing the space in which I operate. And I'm so thankful that NFC Systems has created this five liter Skyreach 4 Mini. You should absolutely check them out at the link in the video description. And then as well, Rode for sending over their Rodecaster Pro, Iquinix for sending over their F96 keyboard stream deck for making their stuff, as well as Aver Media for making their live gamer duo. The only things that were sent to me for transparency reasons are the Rodecaster Pro, the iQuinix keyboard, and then the autonomous desk. Everything else I have purchased and set up myself. All of my cameras are mine. All of my PC parts are mine. I purchased this all straight up. And I built this the way that I wanted it to be now that I'm a solo operation here in the United States. So that's it for this video. That is my world's smallest streaming PC. Not the world's smallest streaming setup, but I have so much flexibility in just a small space that allows me to do multiple different things that I'm very excited for. So I'm excited for the future. I've got a lot of content planned coming up in 2021. So get subscribed if you wanna stay up to date on all of that. And again, big thanks to today's video sponsor. Don't forget to check out Brilliant at the link in the video description. Big thanks to them for sponsoring today's video. And also my friends, just learn. I'm a fan of learning. I, I encourage you, go learn things on Brilliant. Neural nets, they're gonna take over our lives, you know? Okay, Skynet's coming. You could be part of it. And that's gonna wrap up this video. Hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech-related content. I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. This thing turns on and it provides like a nice little back glow for doing overhead shots. See, it's beautiful. Cheers.